a copy of our Purpose for Missions on the back counter. It is green if you are interested in reading the whole thing. I'm going to be summarizing for today. Faith Bible Church has an organized mission program for the purpose of proclaiming the gospel worldwide. Amen. This will be evidenced by local outreach, our prayer, and financial support of missionaries outside of our body, and by our supporting and sending of missionaries from our church body. We believe that it is the obligation of the saved to witness by life and by word. Notice how important both of those are by how we live and what we say to the truths of the Holy Scriptures and to seek to proclaim the gospel to all mankind. Here is the procedure for approving missionaries and projects through Faith Bible Church. And again, I'm summarizing. A member of the church brings a missionary's name to the mission committee for approval. Number two, the mission committee will review the missionary and or program with whom they are associated and will make a recommendation to the elder board regarding approval. The missionary statement of faith must agree with our statement of faith. And letter B, upon receipt, recip, <laughs> receiving all information, the elder board will make a determination to the approve or reject the missionary or project. Corporate giving. Faith Bible Church will support a chosen mission project by taking a corporate collection one time each month. Members and friends of Faith Bible Church are encouraged to give to the individual missionaries of their choice. For those missionaries and projects approved the church, approved by the church, offerings will be collected weekly as part of general uh, offering collection. Friends and members may uh, designate an amount to be given using the memo section of a check or by placing cash or check in a marked envelope. And then the mission committee will develop a regular plan to verbally inform the body of the activity of reg um, regularly supported missionaries as well as special projects. So today's special project, our Special offering, as you received an email today, is going to be for the Glenn family. Uh, we will be, I will be covering them very briefly during, uh, right before the offering that we receive. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the praise team. All right, thank you. Then Dan Morley, you'll be up right after that.
What's that? Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, I don't think that uh, Dan Morley needs much of an introduction, but he is doing an excellent job at Raccoon River Bible Camp. He and his tremendous helpmate, Sue, make it to run like an almost well-oiled machine, right? I mean, there's a few kinks every once in a while. Praise the Lord for all that you've done and all that the Lord does through the camp. So, welcome. That's one a lot of paper you got there. <laughs> well, good morning. good morning. It's good to be here in Sac City this morning. Um, first, before I forget, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support, um, for your financial support, for the sending of the campers, and for you were you guys came and helped clean in the kitchen, and that was that was a fun day, and it was it was good to see you guys then. So. Um, Jason gave me about seven minutes, I think he said. So, yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, the missions team, okay. But anyway, it's good to be here this morning. Um, So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, If you are interested, I have a, uh, from our annual meeting, I'll have some copies of the, uh, the director's report and copies of the trustee's report and I'll have those available if you want to see those. But I'll go through a little bit of the information that's in them um, here this morning. So God has had me there at Raccoon River uh, for three seasons now. Um, I finished three seasons. And um, as you know, I I didn't come out of a a, a minister-type background, but I I was a self-employed contractor before God called me to... Uh, lead there at Raccoon River Bible Camp. Um, So three years already, it's hard to believe. Um, God has been good. God is always good. But uh, as we see him working in our lives, we we continue to say God is good. Um, This last year, or this year, our theme verse, as you can see on the the screen, um, our theme verse was Titus 2.11, but the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And uh, then our extra memory was in the book of Titus. So um, that was good. We have never uh, used Titus before, but as I was getting ready for the season, it seemed like a good book uh, to use this year. Um, Our theme song was All Glory Be to Christ. Um, And then we'll go on to the next slide. I forgot to bring a, I don't, I didn't bring a, oh, there's a clock on the wall back there. I, I'll keep an eye on the time. I was going to say I forgot to bring a time keeper, but, okay. Camp, the director's report, um, and this was exciting to me. Um, in 2020 was my first season. Um, the total campers were, were 247, and we were just glad that we could have camp that summer. Um, God was good to us there. And then the next year, 2021, we had 299. And then this year, 2022, um, we had 344 campers. And that doesn't include family camp. That's just the camps that you see there. So um, so the, the numbers are good. We can still increase our numbers some, but we can't continue that growth rate because we just don't have the room there at, in, at Raccoon River. But, um, it's good to see the numbers up, and every summer the kids come, or the camp, I, I call them kids, and I try to correct myself every time, the campers come, and um, they, they enjoy the atmosphere there at camp, the, the, the family-type atmosphere, the learning of the scriptures, and they see God working, and then they don't want to go home always, but we tell them, you can, you can take uh, Jesus with you when you go home, make sure you know how to run to him when you're having troubles. So we're, we're excited about the numbers there on that slide. So uh, here's the counselor reports. Uh, the, from what we know, um, the decisions that were made this summer, and uh, only God can see our hearts, but we, we try to get, we're, we're hoping that kids will give their lives to Christ and that they will um, be assured of their salvation 
and that they will think about serving God the rest of their lives. And so these are the, the numbers that we know of. Um, we know that God works in and through and above all that, that we can see, but here's the numbers that we have um, from the counselor reports about those that have got saved and, and given their life to Christ. Um, the, this is a list of how many uh, staff and volunteers we had each week. Um, we couldn't do the things we do at camp without a lot of volunteers and a lot, uh, a lot of st staff there. So um, many hands helped this summer at camp. The, um, this is just a little calendar of the uh, events that happened, um, some of them in 2021 and some of them into 2022. This is um, the, and some numbers there. You can kind of read down through. If you're interested in this information, I believe it will all be, I can give you some reports at the end too. Um, any, as we're going through, if you have questions, uh, don't be afraid to raise your hand. Uh, any questions on this slide um, that we see here? I'll give you a moment to look at that. And then we'll move on to the next one. Um, this, these, the next few slides will be, um, is kind of the trustees report information. And um, these are things that we've done around camp. And this is a, the kind of stuff that my hands like and mind like to work on. So as we go through this, you'll, you'll see I've, I, I try to do continuous improvement in each area of the camp. Um, I, I do that as well with the administrative type stuff too, but this, so each building, each, each thing I try to work on here, and you can see um, the things that we've done. I'll kind of let you uh, look at each of these things here. We worked in the house, in the craft cabin, in the shop. Um, there's the shop. I've been. You'd think I'd have it all organized after three years, but it's it's ongoing. A good shop that's busy is always always needing organized. So, on on the grounds, we we were able to put a new culvert in, so we can uh, cross across the little creek without going into the, through the neighbors through the neighbor's field. And then we keep. Um, I've, I've been clearing some brush and stuff around the camp. And every time we clear some new brush out, it seems like there's always a little bit of scrap iron in there to, to clear out as well. Um, we, got, we got a new, a different internet. The only thing we, we can get there is a satellite type internet, um, but we were able to uh, hook into Starlink uh, this year. And that's working better than what we had. It works pretty good. So. All right, the next slide on um, the guys' cabins. We've been, I've been kind of trying to uh, fix those up a little bit. So all of them now have new entry doors, and um, several of them have new roofs on them. There's two more of the guys' cabins I'd like to put new roofs on. And I'd, I might get to that this year. We'll see how it goes. But I have all the supplies. I just need to get some time to put in there. If you're ever bored and are interested in that kind of thing, I've always got a list of projects going there. And then uh, on the fourplex, uh, we put new entry doors on the fourplex, if you know, if you know which building I'm talking about, but it, it made it look a lot nicer that way. The old doors, um, they didn't keep all the critters out like they were supposed to. The, they just weren't, they were just old. When they built that in the 70s, they had used doors that they put on then, and they weren't exterior type doors, they were just interior type doors, but, but they worked for a good long while. But this year we were able to put new doors on there. And then the new, let's see, the new cabin is still, I wanna get that moving along. Um, I'm, I, I have to put some days on the calendar of when I will uh, you know, set aside some time to actually work on that. Um, there's, there's many things to do there at camp. And uh, uh, one of the fun things we did in the girls' dorm this year was we assigned a flower name to each of the rooms. And so we got those uh, signs put up for that. So each room now, instead of a number, is a, is a flower. And that's kind of fun. The guys' cabins have been tree names for years. Now the, 
in the girls' dorm, the rooms are, have flower names. The, um, the nurse's station, we just did a little bit in there. The acorn, we did a little bit. Um, and you can read through there. In the next slide, the dining hall. We did quite a bit of work in the kitchen area. Um, or in, down in the dining and kitchen area. We, my goal was to get the dishwashing process a little more efficient in the kitchen, and I, we, I think we worked on that. This year we had Dan Lamgo as our head cook. I don't know if any of you know Dan Lamgo, but he, he just really enjoys cooking, and it was, it was fun to eat what he had cooked this summer. So. And, but we, he was also, he's kind of a processes guy too, so we worked hard to get the, the dishwashing process uh, more efficient and things like that. So. And, and he, he did, uh, he liked the outdoor grill. Once, when we have our, on Wednesday nights, we have, um, what do we call it, chuck wagon supper. And so he would grill hot, or hamburgers and hot dogs each Wednesday for us. And let's see, this is my last slide here. Um, some more work, this, the speaker's cabins. I have a little more work I want to do on those. Uh, but we were able to get a new door in Ebony on the, for entry door. And we redid the ramp there a little bit. So any questions on the physical aspect of, or, or I'll open it up to any questions you might have about camp. I'm not just physical, but other things there. Does anybody have questions? Like I say, it's good to be here this morning, and it, it's exciting to see. I hear you have a, um, a new member classes going on here, and that's always exciting to see new members, and it's fun to see churches that are, are growing and, and doing things. So, any questions? Did I get my seven minutes? I have no idea. I, I don't watch the clock here. Yeah. Let's pray. Yeah. It was close. <laughs> Lord, we'd like to lift up our brother in Christ, Dan and Sue, and his, his family, his kids. Lord, I thank you so much for their desire to serve you at Raccoon River Bible Camp. Thank you so much for all the upgrades. We thank you most of all for the kids who've come to know the Lord Jesus. It's so encouraging to see a, almost a third of the campers making a decision in one way or another. God, thank you for what you are doing through that camp. I pray you continue to bless and, and use this camp. Thank you, Lord, for all the board members. I pray you continue to use this camp to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dan. I'm just going to gather up my stuff. Here's the clicker. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be covering the Awana program and a special offering we have for the Glenn family. <clears throat> so I'll be going over the offering first, and then, uh, or not the, I'll be going over why we're doing the offering, and then I'll go over the Awana program, and then we'll be uh, doing the special offering after I pray for both. <clears throat> so many of you have probably known uh, Awana missionary, uh, Ron Glenn went to heaven July 30th, 2022. Ron has served the churches of Iowa for the past 28 years. Ron has provided excellent service to Iowa churches and participated in many trips through Awana. His love for Christ compelled him to serve not only in Iowa, but to share the gospel and train Awana leaders in many parts of the world. We will surely miss our friend and co-laborer. We find comfort in Matthew 25, 21, knowing that when Ron went to heaven, he heard the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. May we so live to enjoy that day when the Lord may say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I'll make thee ruler over many things. 
Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Matthew 25, 21. And then there's an address yeah, up there if you want to send cards and stuff. The Awana program. With an unwavering commitment to the gospel, Awana is being used to reach over 4 million kids every week in 120 countries, giving children and youth from every background an opportunity to know, love, and serve Jesus for a lifetime. It's an important program because not everyone has Christ in their homes. A lot of people, they don't probably never even heard the word Christ unless it was used in vain. And many kids, it's going to be the first time they ever heard the gospel, and it's a place of, be a place for refuge where they can come and gather and just feel safe and be a fellowship and uh, hear the gospel. And hopefully they can take it home and even spark an interest in the parents. It's usually supposed to be kind of the other way around, but um, God works in uh, uh, crazy ways. So through the innocence of the children, hopefully he can bring the parents to know Christ also and their friends. So it's a very important uh, program because they are our future leaders in, in our country. And without Christ in their hearts, who knows what kind of direction they would lead us. So if you know anyone or any children, uh, grandchildren, just uh, try and bring them, get them to come. It's an important uh, program. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to be praying for both. And then with music, uh, Donna will uh, play while we uh, do the offering. Nicole and Nadia, you want to come up and stand while I do the Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful that you sent Ron Glenn into the world, knowing all the good work that he would do. Lord, it's such a blessing uh, that he was on this earth to do this fabulous work, the Great Commission. Lord, we are just so blessed. Lord, uh, just watch over his family, uh, watch over Claudine, and uh, rest them as they suffer the loss, but very well know that he went home to be with his, fa his father. Lord, uh, we pray for the Awana program. We pray for the financing of it. We pray that people still uh, uh, want to be leaders and uh, find new churches to install Awana program in. Lord, and it's just that it grows, and there just sparks many interests in Awana that many kids come to know Christ. Lord, and that they just continue and follow Christ all the way through their lives, not just when they leave the doors of their home. Because many, many kids lose their faith once they enter into college years and over. Our purpose in the one is hopefully to just keep them interested and just know the Lord God well enough that they just uh, have a love for him to continue it for a lifetime. Dear Lord, we just pray for the faithfulness of our workers here at our Faith Bible Church to uh, be here for the kids every week and uh, just provide them uh, the gospel and uh, a safe place to be. All these things we ask and pray in your name, God. Amen.
Jesus, why me? And Jesus said, Come to the water, stand by my side. And oh, you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every teardrop when in darkness you. I got too excited. Can you see me? I'm vertically challenged. Um, good morning, Faith Bible Church family. I am so glad to be a part of this family. My job up here is to, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> this is, I'm not in my comfort zone. This is very uncomforty for me right now. <laughs> So bear with me. We had a missionary meeting, and everyone on the committee had a group of missionaries to talk about. And I said, oh, I really don't want to do this. I'm not very comfortable talking in public. And Pam and Pastor said, no, Sherry, you have to do this. This is your passion. So here I am. I think that I, what I wanted to do is I think World Missions is amazing, and I'm so glad our church supports all the people that they do. But I said, what if we, what if we brought this home right here in our own congregation? Each Sunday, we have people. in our own families, our friends, our coworkers, our classmates, people that we all know personally that are lost. 
And I said, how can we share with those people that matter most to our personal families? And my mom, she was really, really good at this. I don't mean to be crying. <laughs> she would share the gospel with everybody she came in contact with, say, people, we have that same ability. We have gospel tracts. In fact, Ben and Brad are going to pass them out, and I want to make sure that everybody in this room has a tool, and you can make this tool personal to how you want to present the gospel to somebody. <coughs> and how I like to do it is every day, I need a Kleenex. Sorry. Kids at school, there's little gospel tracks here. You have a classmate maybe that's going through a hard time and you know about Jesus that you can share with them. There's how to know you're 100% sure you're going to heaven. Sometimes I like to write just in case in a smiley face and I'll leave it at a restaurant. If we have a nice meal and we leave a generous tip, always leave a generous tip when you leave a gospel track. Don't ever just leave this. Servers don't appreciate that. They'll just throw it away. I, this was my mom's favorite. It's from 1977, but it has the plan of salvation in it. And it's kind of long, and I'd like to get some new ones that are maybe a little more modern. And you're all going to get one of these. If you can think of somebody, if you close your eyes for just a moment, and you think of somebody in your life that has not heard the gospel, Please think about how you can share this with them. You are planting a seed. Bill's a farmer and he plants seeds in the garden. And God grows the seed, but somehow that seed has to get in the ground in order to grow. And we might not be all the waterers, but we can at least put this information in somebody's hand. What else I like to do is on the times that we're going through right now, you have some hope and you can share with somebody and say, you know, crazy things are happening. Here's some <coughs> some encouragement. I have this is my not fanny pack. <laughs> but if I'm out and about and I'm in in the bathroom, you can leave one in the stall. You got a captive audience. <laughs> Put them in conspicuous places, waiting areas, um, places where people are gonna find these. And somebody, you don't know, God has prepared somebody's heart to receive this. And if you can get it to them, that's the most important thing. We, we need to be the light that shines brightest if we're the only light in that room. And um, I think we all have people in our lives that haven't heard, and who's going to share with them? One of the missionaries that came a while back was talking about how people mostly get saved is by a family member or a close friend. And we need to be that people because I don't know about you, but I think once in my whole entire life, someone has offered me a gospel track or presented the gospel to me, other than a Jehovah's Witness, and they didn't take mine. But <laughs> nine times out of ten, if you come up to somebody, and Denise and I have been going out to lunch some time, or, well, she says I dive headlong into the awkward. And I, I have a lot of stories, and I'm not going to share them because I don't have time. But Pastor did say I could say as long as I want up here and talk. But I, I will. I will. But having something on the tip of your tongue to say, if you're at the cash register and the, the gal at the register, you say, hey, can I give you this? It's nothing weird, I promise. I just care about you. I might never see you again. Oh, thank you. you know, they'll take it. Or um, leave them places. If you're shy and you don't like talking in front of people like me, <laughs> you can leave them in the waiting area. I know Don's going to a special place tomorrow. Don, if you leave these someplace on the table, somebody's going to find it. Don't litter and never foist it on somebody. Here, 
like this. But you can you can spread the gospel. And all of us here, we all think of how many people we can reach. Uh, an, an example that, that um, I was... I like to take them with me. Keep some in your car. Keep them on your in your purse, in your backpack, so that you're ready in case you see somebody. Sometimes I'll be somewhere, and God just gives me this pull. It's like, oh, you should share something with that person. And I'll be like, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> and he's like, no, you got to get over that. you got to have some holy boldness, because hmm. right now the harvest is ripe. And we don't know what the person your your heart is pulling towards is going through, but God's already preparing their hearts to receive that. And there's been a lot of times where I've had some really amazing conversations with people. And all of a sudden, I, just the other day, I was at Walgreens. I gave a cashier a gospel tract, and she goes, "Oh, I'm saved, but it, I haven't I haven't done anything for a long time, and I really need a church." And I, in here, I, I put our little church business card that you're invited to Faith Bible Church. It has the times, it has our phone number, and Allison just gave me a stamp to put our information on the back of this so that when you give it to somebody, they can follow up if they want to call someone and learn more. But the most important thing is World Missions is really great, but let's bring it close home here. This, this place that we all have the people in our lives that we need to, to share with, and sometimes we don't. But I don't know who's going to share with them if we don't. So um, I just would like to say a quick prayer, and I'll be unnervous. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this church family. I, I just appreciate each and every one of them so much. And Lord, I'd love to give them the tools and that they can use somehow to reach someone in their family, their friends, coworkers, classmates, even strangers, Lord, that don't know you, that you would use this church in a mighty way, that you would um, help us to have holy boldness and, and, and just to go ahead and out of our comfort zone to come and share the gospel that people are, people are perishing. And Lord, the more of us that contribute to um, sharing your word, we pray that um, people will come to know you, and we just pray ex abundant blessings over those that are here, and, and that you will give them the abilities to share with their family members, and I thank you for this time, Lord, and I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. As Jeff comes, I wanted to just share that um, right behind Melissa... Come on, Vanna, Melissa, got to show us. There we go. Very nice. That, um, I don't know, track holder, that one has kids' tracks in it. And then the, there are two on the left, um, right on the, the serving counter. We call it the back table. We call it all kinds of things. There's always tracks that are stuffed in there as well. Also, third drawer underneath the copier in my study, you'll find lots of tracks as well as a stamper. So we want to equip you in sharing the gospel in that way. Thank you, Jeff. Good morning, Faith Bible Church. Too bad my wife is so shy and can't talk in public. Um, that's a joke. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Gideon Society. And this is mostly from a personal viewpoint, a couple quick stories. Uh, our family moved to Iowa in 1966, and I'd never really stayed in a motel room, and we stayed in Kankakee, Illinois, on the way from Indianapolis to Storm Lake. And there's a Bible in there, and I thought that was kind of amazing, and I opened it up, and I asked my mom, I said, what are the Gideons? And she says, well, they place Bibles in motel rooms, and people can take them if they want them. And I said, can I have this one? She goes, no, leave it for somebody else. You have one. So. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the other story is uh, when I w went through Air Force basic training at beautiful Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas in 1989, we were issued these little Bibles. And I think they still issue them out in basic training. 
Did you get one, Patrick? Did you get one? No. Wow, they did in the Air Force. Oh, oh well. So anyway, <laughs> the Gideon's International is an evangelical Christian association for men founded in 1899 in Janesville, Wisconsin. Their current headquarters is located in Nashville, and as of this year, they have 269,000 members. They uh, help out, and their mission is to spread Bibles, free Bibles, uh, in 186 countries worldwide. They're big, they're very big, and it's a great way to spread the word. We've got some back there and a little basket that my wife made up. Uh, if you want one, grab one. The green colored ones are for military. It, that's just what they do. Um, you can take any Bible that you want, it's back there. They have orange ones and brown ones and blue ones, and they each represent a type of person or group that they give those Bibles to. The Association uh, of Gideons received $124 million last year in operating support and revenues, and $60 million of that was used for the purchase of placement of Bibles. Their total assets, and like I say, they're big, they're worth $191 million as an association. And I'll conclude uh, my talk on the Gideons with a Bible verse. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The next one I'm going to talk about is Samaritan's Purse. Now, uh, you must have been living under a rock if you've never heard of Billy Graham. His son, Franklin, heads up Samaritan's Purse. They, uh, are very, they were very active during COVID relief. They had a ship and a big setup in New York Harbor uh, in 2020, I believe it was. And it's kind of built on the story of the Good Samaritan in, in uh, the chapter of Luke and gives a clear picture of God's desire for us to help those in desperate need wherever we find them. Samaritan's Purse is a non-denominational evangelical Christian organization providing spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. Since 1970, Samaritan's Purse has helped meet the needs of people who are victims of war, poverty, natural disasters, disease, and famine with the purpose of sharing God's love through his son, Jesus Christ. The organization serves the church worldwide to promote the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Its headquarters are in Boone, North Carolina, and the CEO is the son of Billy Graham, Franklin Graham. Again, this is a really big outfit, and they do a lot of wonderful, wonderful work. Their net revenue for 2021 was over $1 billion. That's how much they took in. And their net assets at the end of 2021 was $832 million. But they have a big staff, and, and they do just a wonderful job. Most recently, they were in the, uh, the floods in Kentucky. They went there and, and helped uh, with aid and disaster relief. So say a quick prayer here. And, oh, real quickly, their websites are real easy. For Gideon's, it's Gideon's dot org www.gideons.org and same with Samaritan's Purse www.samaritanspurse.org it's that dot org thing um, it's too bad we don't have a dot Jesus but anyway say a quick prayer um, gracious God uh, we thank you for these two giant entities that help spread your word and help people find you and help people in general Watch over them, guide them, and direct them. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Hello again. I'm going to do the missionary uh, missions on uh, the carts uh, for Christ. They were missionaries uh, over in China, 
when they had to come back when things started getting kind of dangerous uh, for Christians over there. Uh, they haven't been able to return, and they don't know if they when or if they can ever go back. Uh, things are really getting tough for Christians. Things are really getting tough for the Chinese people altogether. Uh, they're going through a recession. Um, it's got a lot of stuff. COVID has really hit. They're restricted to people in COVID. And there's just a lot of businesses just barely hanging on, and, and I, it's a, a bad situation for them financially. So even though this is about the Clarks, we still need to think about the Chinese people over there and, and uh, all the stuff they're suffering. So but now on to the Clarks. Um, <clears throat> at the top of it, oh, got a different one. So redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, we just returned from the retreat conference for all the camp, campus uh, Bible fellowship workers with BMM, which stands for Baptist Mid Missions. The verse above could have very well been the theme of the conference. It was such a blessing to fellowship with seasoned CBF workers, which is campus Bible fellowship workers, and learn from them what God is doing through the campus ministries around the USA. It was encouraging and eye-opening to hear from a lawyer with Alliance Defending Freedom about how many freedom of speech, including religious speech, cases have been won recently defending students' rights to express their views freely on secular public campuses, which is awesome. Uh, God is using campus ministries to reach students that have never had uh, darkened a church door. I've never heard that saying before, whatever that means. But sadly, as of right now, we will not be able to start full-time campus ministry this coming school year. I will still be doing a one-on-one -on -one Bible study with Cena. I'll explain a little bit more about who that is later. And a Wednesday night study at our church because we had lost some support. We are at 70% and must raise support again. Starting August, we will have to drop our international Sunday school class and start visiting local churches, even if we don't have a meeting scheduled so that we can start building a network of local churches. If our current supporters could raise their level of support by 10 to 20 percent, it would make a huge difference. Please pray that we start cold visiting local churches that individuals and churches would desire to partner with us to reach the national and international students on the KU Med Campus. We have gotten some great ideas of how to start and continue an outreach on that campus, and as far as I can find out, there is no gospel outreach ministry going on there. It is a very liberal campus, but God desires light in the darkness, same as in China and a lot of places that uh, it's a very anti-Christian place. It's usually where Christianity starts to flourish. Okay, now on to Sina. Sina is a, a guy he knows in Iran, and he's studying in the United States, uh, studying the Bible in the U.S. I don't know if he's at a, it doesn't say if he's at a, a Christian college or what, but he's just studying the Bible. And it's illegal for Muslims to change their religion in Iran. So he's really worried about his parents, because if they find out he is studying the Bible, they could they could punish his parents uh, up to the point of death. So, uh, and he really, he says that he's reminded that God loves his parents even more than he does, and it's important that his parents hear the gospel. So, <clears throat> recently he has, uh, Cena has been giving me a percentage of what he believes about the gospel Bible when we, meet, when we meet. At the beginning of the study, he said 90%. When we were done, I asked him, Again, he looked me straight in the eye with a big smile and said, 100%. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and he died for me. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's awesome that uh, he converted a guy who was in a Muslim uh, country. So praises he has are safety to and from the conference, the great fellowship we had during the conference, and uh, the way our kids bonded with other uh, MKs, whatever that is. And he has praise for uh, Cena's growing faith and uh, good progress on the kitchen addition. They got uh, a picture up there with the addition. 
and requests are that we'll be able to quickly line up more meetings with local churches <clears throat> and individuals who would partner with us and start a CBF in Kansas City, and that we'd be able to raise the last 30% of the support before the next year, and that they can be faithful witnesses to see fruit in our current ministries even while we start visiting new churches, raising support, and networking local churches to get involved in campus outreaches. <clears throat> and that's pretty much what's going on with them. Uh, so now we'll just end in a prayer form, please. So, um, Dear Lord, uh, we are so thankful for our, our fellow brothers in Christ, uh, the Clarks, and uh, their desire, O oh Lord, to spread the gospel in uh, uh, hardened uh, countries against, uh, against the Bible, Lord. Uh, we pray that they can go back to China someday and uh, finish the work that they're doing there. We pray for the Chinese people, Lord. Um, uh, pray for the Christians' uh, uh, security and safety and a financial uh, uh, well-being. Lord, we pray that the Clarks uh, meet their last uh, financial uh, uh, 30% that they need to continue what they're doing. And Lord, uh, we pray for the KU Med Campus that uh, there is a light in that darkened uh, atheist world, O oh Lord, that shines brightly and may it continue to grow and uh, maybe even start a revival there. Lord, we, we pray that uh, Sina uh, continues uh, learning about uh, Jesus and he, he is able to witness to his parents and even uh, fellow uh, Muslims about Christ and the true gift he gives us. Lord, we just pray for the Clark's uh, financial well-being. We pray for uh, uh, the additions they're putting on their house, Lord. And we just uh, renew, their, renew their strength, Lord, and just uh, revitalize them and uh, let them uh, just do the work they're meant to do. All these things, Lord, we ask and pray in your name. Amen. Good morning. I have three missions that I'll be covering this morning. The first one is one that uh, we just recently voted on to support as missionaries, and that is Beauty Amidst the Ashes. Beauty Amidst the Ashes is a Christian organization that funds adoptions, international adoptions, and local adoptions for Christian families. Uh, their verse, James 127, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. The founders are Carl and Shaley Christensen. Carl was adopted as a child, and so he has a, has a heart for adoption and children in need. And his vision is that going into churches, seeing believers, seeing Christians support adoption and foster care, and the, the fact that we can be the hands and feet in Jesus through foster care and adoption and giving kids the gospel and telling them who Christ is and showing them the love of Christ through our homes and our love for them. Um, and it, it's, as a foster parent, it's, it's an amazing experience and being involved with Beauty Amidst the Ashes and what they do and when you have a child come in that has never heard the gospel, that has never heard the Bible or been to a church, to be welcomed in a home of a believer and then brought to church and to see them open the Bible and read scripture and be saved is is a vision that I have and I, and I think other believers is, is something that we should desire and want. So Beauty Amidst the Ashes, they have a couple of things that they do every year, one of which is called the HOPE 2022 conference this year, where they have a conference in Des Moines where you go for adoption and foster care and just to be refreshed and, and know what Christ has in that, in that ministry and what they do and hear stories of people who have been through it and, and to learn how to support and grow through foster care and adoption. And then the other one they have uh, for 100 bikes for 100 kids every year, every summer they have a bike drive where they give foster kids bikes. And uh, then they have also just the, the grant program that they do, they go through churches and find someone that is a believer that wants to adopt a child, 
that can't do it because of the funds that's needed because it's, it's expensive to adopt, especially internationally. And they go through and they, they raise funds for these families that want to adopt, which is pretty amazing. The next, pr next missionary is City Union Mission. This is a uh, homeless shelter in Kansas City. And I have... I think I pull it up here. City Union Mission is an evangelical Christian ministry committed to sharing the gospel, meeting the spiritual, physical, and emotional need of men, women, and children who are poor and homeless. They are based out of Kansas City, started in 1924, and they help the homeless and give them the gospel. It's not just about giving them food or giving them clothing or a place to stay, but it's meeting their spiritual needs. Because there's always a reason why these people are homeless and why they're in this position where they're in. And sometimes what they really need is, is spiritual. They need to know that they have hope. They need to know who Christ is, and that's what City Union Mission does, along with Beacon of Hope, which is based out of Fort Dodge. It's to reach out to men who are homeless, hungry, and in need of hope, demonstrating the grace of Christ through food, shelter, clothing, and the word of God. And I think the one thing I like about Beacon of Hope is that they have a chapel time, and they invite churches and pastors to come in and to preach the gospel to these people, to these men in need. You can go in there and, and listen to the word of God preached every Sunday over there as well. And for that hope to be given to these people is, is really, really neat. Because when you're in there, and I've, I've been in one in Kansas, I've been into the Beacon of Hope shelter, and to see these men be in a position when they see the hope that Christ offers them and then begin to grow and turn their lives over to Christ, and they go from being homeless to having employment and having a home and a life and serving Christ in, in a local church is really the goal. It's not just to feed. It's not just to shelter. It's not just to clothe. It's to give them spiritual hope. Let's, uh, let's pray for these three ministries. Father, we just come before you this morning. We thank you so much for Beauty Amidst the Ashes and Carl and Shaylee and, and their love for you and the, the desire of, of Beauty Amidst the Ashes to see believers adopt and foster kids and show these children the love that you have for us and the love that you have for them. And Father, the hope that they can have in you and, and being adopted just as we were adopted in Christ. Father, that you've taken us into your home, into your heart, Lord, the same way that we as believers are to, to do for the orphans and widows. And Father, we just pray for, for being with the ashes that you would continue to do a work there, a work in their ministry and a work in their family. And the Father, for Beacon of Hope and City Union Mission, we pray that you would continue to work in their organizations, that they would begin, continue to thrive, continue to be there for these men and women and children who are homeless and in need. Father, that the spiritual need would be met in, in these people and that uh, you would provide the finances needed to continue on with the, with the mission. Lord, we know the costs associated with with continuing to house people and to feed them and to clothe them, Lord, is, is sometimes very astronomical and seems unreachable. But, Lord, you are the provider, and we pray that you would continue to provide for them. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to share with you a little this morning about uh, Joni and David Carruthers. I told Donna she's a very good friend of Joni and that she should be reading this. She said, I'd do that if you'd play piano, and I was all about that, but <laughs> she didn't think it'd be a good idea. So I think we have some slides. Daily Transformation, and it's in its fourth birthday this Wednesday. So much has happened in four years, and the Lord continues to bless. We are thankful for friends like Faith Bible Church who regularly support and prays for our family and ministry. We are working with four groups of people, the seekers, those who don't know Jesus, 
the scattered sheep, believers who find themselves without a church home, the stuck sheep believers who have a church but need some encouragement with daily discipline and growth, and the shepherds, pastors. We currently have groups in states all across the nation, 15 here in Vegas. These meet uh, for fellowship and Bible study and use the journal as a guide for their meetings. Donna, hold up the journal, would you please? And we have those, I believe, available in the back. Uh, it's a good way to do your daily quiet time. Um, Joni is also meeting one-on-one -on -one with one lady locally and two in Uganda via Zoom. We have a group of 20 who meet every day at 10 to do their Bible study reading and a SOAP method, uh, which is to make practical application. Two men have received Christ from this group and were baptized this week while co-workers watched. The boss also has been led to close his business on Sundays and Monday and allow all to attend church. The Lord is blessing as he grows and lets the Lord lead. Two others who grew up Catholic were now baptized in the pool at their retirement community while friends and neighbors watched. God is working here in Las Vegas, and brother, Las Vegas needs them to work. Tuesday, or th Thursday, a security guard asked Joni for a Bible, and because she looked at the journal and wants to read it, she'd never owned one before. Her name is Summer, or Angel, and she wants to find purpose for her life. God opened a door for David to pastor a very small church an hour out of Vegas. Overton, Nevada, is 95% Mormon. Ethan and Abby are in the process of moving out there and are beginning to work with young adults and youth. Abby is their daughter. The Mormons do a great job of teaching what they believe to their members, and we are beginning to teach the Christians what the difference are. Ethan is working on a PhD in apologetics and is writing his dissertation on Mormonism. He's super excited to have a lab for his work. David and Ethan leave tomorrow, August 22nd, to meet with our leadership in Uganda. They have learned a lot through mistakes in Pakistan and are being very international to meet sure, uh, excuse me, to make sure all are united and truly a partner as they continue to move forward with the four theological training centers. Uh, these are the First Love Bible College. Um, our mobile app continues to improve and we use extensively overseas, especially in countries that find it hard to own Bibles and Christian material. Our lead programmer, Hemendra, is traveling from India to meet with the Ugandan team and see how the app is being used. Please pray for Hermendra as he hears the gospel and experiences the love of the Ugandans and David and Ethan. You can find the app on Google Play and App Store, Daily Transformation Journal. Please pray for safety as the men travel and also for the women left back in the States. We have already been seeing some significant spiritual attacks this week. Keep us on our knees and focused on the correct things that we do to the ministry. We look forward to sharing how the Lord worked when you guys come home on the 31st. Thank you again for your prayers and support. We couldn't do all we uh, do without you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's been a thrilling joy to see Joni from when she was a little girl to grow up and start to reach out into the community and the world with the gospel of Christ. And then as she joined with David, and they became a team together, and now their family is a team. Lord, I pray that you will bless their ministry, that you will help them to continue to have an impact on the unbelieving world. Thank you so much for their commitment to Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in a world where, where schools are 
shifting around uh, quick as sand. Frontier School of the Bible is committed to training its students in the scriptures with a consistent literal interpretation of scripture. Frontier exists to train students for life and ministry. It is the aim of Frontier to provide the students with accurate instruction in the Word of God, an academic environment capable with compatible with gaining a thorough knowledge of the Word of God, a social atmosphere that encourages spiritual growth and an opportunity for Christian service. Frontier is a faith school dependent solely on God and the prayerful interests of his own people who envision eternal dividends through investing in the lives of men and women given over to his purposes. Faculty and staff members are dependent upon God for their personal needs. And what that means practically is that all of the faculty and staff at Frontier School of the Bible are on their own missionary support. And for that reason, they keep the cost of tuition uh, at a very reasonable uh, price. The uh, average semester with room, board, tuition, and student fees is less than $3,500 at Frontier School of the Bible. At this time, Alan has a short video. We're going to play just a portion of it. It's their promotional video, and it's very encouraging. Being immersed in the Word of God on a daily basis has taught me so much in my personal walk with the Lord. This type of education is exactly what many of my generation are looking for. The main foundation of the school is the Word of God. You can't beat the cost of Frontier School of Bible. It is amazing. It's very rare to find a school that teaches straight from the Bible. Uh, I'm trying to do that. Frontier is located in southeastern Wyoming. As you drive in, you see the rolling plains and beautiful bluffs. This is an area of the country that's really rich in history. People are, I think people are coming from all over the country. They are coming even from other countries at times to Frontier, um, specifically because they want a biblically sound foundation off which to live their life. These students are really here just to find a place to really focus on God's Word and to get into it. Getting a biblical foundation for my life will serve me well no matter where God puts me. It is critical that I know personally uh, what I believe and why I believe it. Many people have been drawn uh, to Frontier School of the Bible because it's commitment to the Word of God, uh, it's commitment to being doctrinally sound, and it's commitment to training mature leaders in the Word. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 tells us that God's Word is profitable for many different things, for all areas of life. One of them being that it prepares us to be used by God. Regardless of whether or not a student feels called to vocational ministry, uh, training in the Word of God prepares them for a life of Christian service. Training for life includes becoming the kind of Christian that God wants to be in whatever situation you're in. Whether that's being a mom or dad, or a business person, or just a person in full-time ministry. Classes like personal evangelism, Bible study methods, worldviews, and doctrine have been really helpful to my spiritual walk with the Lord. I personally can't tell you how um, much that little Bible school meant to Allison and I in the way that the Lord used it for our spiritual formation. There's lots of um, students at, uh, who've come up through Raccoon River Bible Camp who have been choosing to go out to Frontier School of the Bible. Um, some have graduated already, and it's just encouraging to see how the Lord continues to use that school. The next school I would like to talk about where um, I spent the first two years after I 
came to know Christ was Calvary Bible College, or as it's known now, Calvary University. It's an accredited college, graduate school, and seminary. It offers degree programs on campus and online, Bible and theology, ministry studies, biblical counseling, intercultural studies, education, music, business administration, and professional directed studies. The desire is to provide students with a a degree that prepares Christians to live and to serve in the church and the world according to a biblical worldview. Calvary is meeting the mission and maximizing the opportunity. You know, for a long time, our students have had to choose. Choose between a high quality biblical education and one that is credentialed to meet their various responsibilities. We're very excited that students no longer need to choose. At Calvary, they can receive the high quality biblical education and the credential they need. Calvary has rebranded to Calvary University to make this happen. Calvary's mission has not changed. Our goal is to prepare our students with the biblical worldview and for them to serve the church and the world and impact it for Christ. Calvary's distinctive is that we're not simply integrating the Bible into our courses, but we're undergirding every single course and every single program with God's Word. That's different. You don't find that in other places. We are truly trying to safeguard and protect what we hold to and believe and the foundation of Calvary for years, even from the time it began. And the Board of Trustees, they've put in place amendments to see that in the future, none of that will ever change. With our recommendation, the Board has voted unanimously on several amendments added to the bylaws, including a mandate to require that the Bible is a required text for every class. Uh, Also, we're holding our faculty accountable for teaching the biblical worldview and the biblical foundations of every discipline in every class. Calvary has always been in the business of preparing students for full-time Christian ministry. We have evidence of that, of alumni around the world serving today. But we also have students that God will lead in different vocations. And for them too, we want to prepare them with a proper foundation biblically to go into wherever God leads them and make a difference. So come study at Calvary. You can earn a degree on campus or online. We have many programs to meet whatever your needs are. You can get a high quality biblical education here and the credential you need to be most effective where the Lord leads you. Please help Calvary University to meet the mission. We need your help. We need you to come alongside so it will maximize the responsibilities given to our students. Calvary University. Meeting the mission and maximizing the opportunities. The average cost right now at uh, Calvary is about $12,000 per semester. Let's go ahead and pray. God, I want to thank you for the way that you've used these two colleges in in my life and the life of thousands who have gone through them and the ways that you have blessed. Father, I pray you continue to bless and continue to use these schools for your honor and for your glory. God, I just um, thank you for the relationships that were built. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. Um, Thank you for using the Word of God to um, equip uh, pastors and missionaries and people in many different kinds of vocations through these incredible schools. Pray that you'll be glorified and continue to bless them, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have just a couple more missions that we're going to be covering for today, but would you stand and join in a hymn? Number 713. Hymn number 713, Rescue the Perishing. Stand if you can. Let's join in all four verses. Jesus of 
talk about my friend Misha. He lives in Ukraine. And I guess I don't have a pointer. Um, he lives way over here. I'll get that. Way, yeah, thank you, whoever has it. Um, in the far western part of Ukraine. And uh, you might know they've been experiencing a lot of difficulties lately. Oops, I gotta find my... All right. So, we hear a lot about Misha. So um, I'm going to be quick. And so you can, you can go to the next slide, Alan, if you want. Um, oh, my goodness. That's my. Hello, dear Sister Pam. Thank you for your nice letter. He says, I'm grateful to all of you for the financial support of my ministry, especially during this difficult period for our country. You always encourage me, and I thank God for you, for your service and great support. And if I make mistakes... I apologize as I try to write with one hand. I am still not good due to my injury to my fingers, which I don't know what happened, but I think it had to do with a table saw. And so um, I do think it's somewhat significant. So you might pray for that. Um, we are very glad that your country supports us. We are uh, our army, and we see success in this struggle. May the Lord bless you richly. For your sacrifice and love. My ministry now continues in the church, and we also make food packages that we send to needy people in different parts of Ukraine. For this, we buy products. Someone brings us products. We also give to our soldiers. In general, we have a lot of work. We don't get bored. We expect the arrival of new refugees and pray for it. I'm very tired and would like to rest a little, but so far, there is no such possibility. So we met Misha when we went to see him in Svelyava, where he was a part of a, a church there. Since then, he and his wife and some other friends who we also met have started this uh, church in Paseka. And some of the people are there. And there's pictures of some things that they've been doing. And then Misha holding some of this food. Um, uh, he's like a brother to me. And I've met him once. I've known him for 20 years over email and uh, uh, he and his wife are very dedicated to the Lord and we just would ask that if you're interested in in um, supporting him financially you could do that um, we we supported him through seminary and now in the planting of this church and um, we wish he could come and meet us but I don't think that's going to happen I wish you could all meet him because you would love him. He would fit right in here. He says he'd like to rest when we were, uh, he was in the military many years ago. And when we were in Ukraine, he said, yes, my, I don't know what he called him. His commander told him, yes, in the grave, you will rest. So you, today you will work. There was, there's time to rest when you are dead. And uh, so uh, that's true. That's true for us too, I think. All right, and my, the other um, mission I want to talk about is Emmanuel's Child, and that is a, a program we support usually at Christmas time, and so I, I do want to talk a little bit. It's that time of year to think about that already, and so you'll be getting more information about that. But Emmanuel's Child is part of spell, uh, the Slavic Gospel Association, and the way we support it is we provide $25 um, for a child to receive a Bible and a Christmas gift. And so sometime in October we'll be collecting money and you can, you can give to Emmanuel's child. And they purchase a Bible in the child's language um, in Ukraine and in Russia and also some gifts for them, and then they present them, I believe probably on Boxing Day, but I'm not sure about that. Um, and then they present the gospel to them when they give them this Bible and this gift and to their families who come as well. And so they have reached many, many, many people with the gospel. And, um, and 
this particular mission because we give money. They take that money and they spend it in Russia and in Ukraine, and especially in Ukraine, I'm excited for them to stimulate the Ukrainian economy. What's happening now and this year, I cannot know, but um, that's how we support that mission. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for our opportunity to have outreach in Ukraine and then some in Russia with Emmanuel's child. And we pray that you'd bless Misha and Sveta and all of those who work so tirelessly to spread the gospel and to now work with refugees and soldiers during the war. So we just um, pray that you would bless them and help them to grow spiritually, keep them emotionally and physically well. And we pray especially that Misha's fingers would heal and then he would um, not have pain and he would be able to work as he has in the past. And we just thank you and praise you for these things in Jesus' name. Well, as some of you know, Todd and Julie Hendry were best man and maid of honor at Allison and I's wedding. We've had a relationship with them for a long time. Allison, going back a lot further than that, as Julie was one of Allison's main mentors through her high school years. So praise the Lord for Julie, because probably without Julie, uh, there would be no us. Is that right? <laughs> so I would like for you to listen very carefully to this sentence. I think it's probably one very short sentence that summarizes kind of where they are at and how you can pray. In all of our 13 years in Brazil, we have never felt so depleted. You know, 2020 was a year of some difficult lockdowns and stuff here in the United States, but it continued into 2021, here we are in 2022, and still government lockdowns in Croata, Brazil, where the Hendries are serving. This has had some pretty tremendous impacts on them, on their family, uh, both emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Meanwhile, um, they have been back in the United States for a little while, um, they just got back, actually, after going uh, back to Brazil in order to do sort of a, a survey of a new area to plant a church. Um, their daughter, Michaela, just started her second year at Calvary University, the school I just talked about. Both Todd and Julie are graduates from that college, and um, she's doing a fantastic job there, and she is, she is learning and growing in a relationship with the Lord. And um, so Todd and Julie, I think, could best use our prayers in the area of rest and restoration. You know, when you are on home assignment in the United States, you hit the ground running pretty hard. And that's what they have been doing the majority of this year. In the meantime, they've also been able to attend some uh, counseling and some uh, encouraging um, ministries, some of which are in the Kansas City area and others of which were up in Michigan. Um, they uh, just took a, a vision trip for the purpose, like I said, of surveying our next area of ministry and visiting Croata. Um, they've been in conversation with a, a pastor and continue to look for how the Lord is leading them in their next ministry. Um, would you join me in praying for Todd and Julie Hendry? Oh, Lord, our, our friends desperately need prayer in the area of um, rest and in the area of encouragement in their ministry. Um, Lord, these last few years has exhausted them. I know that Julie has been struggling physically. And uh, Lord, we ask for your healing for them. Um, God, thank you so much for the, um, for the church that's been planted and is doing well in Croata. We pray your continued blessing upon that ministry. I pray for your direction, for your wisdom. I pray for unity for Todd and Julie as they look um, to where you would have them looking for your vision. 
Lord, we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the mission I'm going to be talking about is the, the Jesus film mission, and there are several different aspects of that. And so the, the Jesus film mission's been around for a lot of years. We, last time we talked about the, the uh, founding people, the uh, Brights, Bill Bright and his wife. But my... Cousin Steve Gettle and his wife Jan have both been involved in it for many years, and they're just finishing up uh, English as a second language type material. And so here's what Jan wrote. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of the Jesus Film Globalization Mobilization Outreach Strategy Team. The Windows of the World, SL. ESL, English Second Language Curriculum, I've been working on for the past three years is complete. In July, it should be on the Jesus Film Project website on the new Refugee Resources page. As you know, I've spent countless hours on this project as a tool to reach out to our communities with the gospel as we love them through helping them to learn this crazy language of English. I want to trust God to do what, with it what he has in mind and give it time to work out inevitable problems that users may encounter as they were able to make any needed changes in the future. You are now able to access this and use it yourself. So since she first started writing this, they have released it and the website's on there and if you want the website, you can go to the Jesus Film uh, website to get it or you can ask me and I'll give you this link that she's got here. So she says thank you very much for your prayers and for your giving that made all this possible. There's a picture of Steve and Jan when they started out. Steve was started in 71, Jan in 1978. They met in Kenya. They now have a family. They have a son and a daughter who are both married and they're expecting their first grandchild and they may actually have one by the time we are reading this. So, just to thank you again for your many prayers. Let's pray for this ministry. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the Jesus Film ministry that has been used all over the world in many, many countries. And we thank you for the translation process that goes into it, but also the, the actual getting into the field and finding people to use it and help teach these people to... Take this to tribes that have no source of even power, that they go on a bicycle with a generator on it to run this equipment. And so we thank you for, for that contact that would not be there if it hadn't been for this ministry. And we thank you for Jan and Steve and for their commitment. And we just pray you bless this Windows to the World material that they've just finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the we got a couple other slides, and Pat, pastors pretty well covered these, so I don't think I'll say much other than the fact that there is an endowment fund, and if we are involved in a mission trip, you can apply for this endowment fund that will pay up to 50% of your costs up to $1,000. So if we have an approved mission project we're working on, there is money that's sitting there to be used to go on mission trips, which we used when we went to Ukraine, we used it when we went to Honduras, and it's available for, for you to use. And I think I'll just run down through the, the couple other slides here to remind you of the other ministries we haven't had time to talk about. And one of them is the church in Honduras that we are still interested in. We haven't had much contact there lately, but we are still have them on our list of missions and we know the people there. The other thing is IFCA, and these are this association is pastors a member of this association, and it has a lot of material that's very good for us and a resource we can go to. It's also been used many times when people are looking at something like a building project, so that may be an opportunity for us to take advantage of this association's resources here. They also have a monthly magazine called Voice, and this magazine, this particular one, had an article in it by Dr. Chip Chase. 
Another thing about this association is anyone who is a Christian can join this association. You can apply and become a member of the, uh, the is IFCA, Independent Reformed Churches of America. So at this point, I think the mission, the praise team's coming up.
before closing prayer, we wanted to let you know that on the back table, there's a missionary book that includes all the stories of missionaries that we have as a local church and a list. And uh, of course, around the missionary board, there are current letters that we keep up every month. What you do is you pull the frame, pull the frame towards you. It opens up and the current missionary letter is right on the front. We also have some cards of encouragement that we would like to ask you to sign on your way out today. There is one of them that is a sympathy card for the Glenn family. It has a ribbon on it. So if you just write a little word of encouragement, sign your name to those cards on your way out. Lastly for today, um, let's see, Lucas, maybe Claudia are going to be handing out Looks like you need to go to the back there, Claudia. Going to be handing out those Gideon Bibles. We encourage you to give those Bibles to somebody else because I know you already have one, right? So give those Bibles to somebody else. Maybe it's a neighbor kid across the street. Maybe it's somebody who's in um, in an assisted living or a nursing home. But that's what these Bibles are for, is to be able to give them out to somebody else. So would you join me in closing in prayer? God, thank you so much for what you're doing through this local church, both um, here in community and around the world. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it is true that for God so loved the world that he gave us one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And Lord, as we're singing that last song, I want to pray for a, a local ministry that we have here at Celebrate Recovery. God, thank you so much for the work you are doing through this local church in in, uh, drawing people closer to the Savior. Um, Pray you continue to bless those leaders and the people who come to celebrate recovery. God, thank you for your many blessings. Pray that you will be glorified in all that we do. And all God's people said, Amen. amen.